Okay, so good morning to everyone. Now, the in yesterday's class, we are discussing about the parallel priority interrupt and for the input output organization. So first we have discussed about the daisy chaining method. And after that, we have started the discussion about the parallel priority interrupt. So the generalized view, we have seen that here, all the input output device that are present. So that input output device, which we have, this input output device are connected parallelly. But in daisy chaining, we have seen that the input output device, which we have, are connected serially. Now, here the input output device are connected parallelly and there is an interrupt register. This is the interrupt register we have and this interrupt register, zero means the highest priority, highest priority input output device. So among the input output device, which we have used, among them that disk has the highest priority among them the disk has the highest priority so what is we have used it as the zero here that's why we have used zero because disk has the highest and lowest priority is what the lowest priority that is that we have used three here that is the keyboard so among this input output device disk has the highest priority so we have used zero here because if any device we put it in zero, that means that input output device will have the highest priority. So disk has the highest priority. So we have put it in here. And among them, keyboard has the lowest priority. So we have put the keyboard at third, three. Now you may say that this input output, we have used only four input output device. We can use many input output device also. More than input output device, we can able to use. But here I have, for example, I have taken the four input output device. Now, the input output device, which will generate the interrupt, makes the interrupt register value to one. Now, let's say among them, disk, printer, reader, and keyboard, among them, the device, which will generate the interrupt will make this interrupt register value as one. And there you see there is a marks register also present. This is a marks register. So in this mask register, initially the value of the marks register is one. Initially we take the value as one. So let's say among disk, printer, reader, and keyboard, disk generated the interrupt. So any device which will generate the interrupt will make this interrupt register value to one. So that means here it will be one, here it will be one, here it will be one, here it will be also one because we are taking such that disk is generated the interrupt. So that means initially what will happen, the interrupt register value will be one. So that's why this one will go as an input of this uh, and get this one will go as the input of this and get this one will go as the input of this and get this one will go as the input of this and get and the second input all of this and get second input will come from where the second input will come from the marks register here this is the marks register so this marks register is what this marks register value initially we take as the one initially we take the value as one so initially that means here also from here the one will go there this will also be one this will also be one this will also be one because initially the value will be one now the end operations will be performed the end operation because that input are going to the end gate so that means end operations will be performed over this two input so that means what that means one into one, the value will be one here, the value will be one here, the value will be one here, and the value will be also one here because one into one, the AND gate, that means one and one, the value, it gives one into one, that means one. So now all of this input, all of this input are one now. Now all of this input are going to the priority encoder. Now 
So this is a device that is used that a priority encoder. Now encoder means you already know that encoder is we can use four into two encoder in digital electronics. You have already know that that encoder, how many types of encoder are there? Four into two, then three into eight, four into 16, like this. So here we are using four into two encoder. That means four input will be given and we will get two output. So that means here, the four input, how this four input will be get by this priority encoder. This from the AND gate, this value will get, the priority encoder will get the value one like this. So that performing the AND operation, after that, the value will, or the input, the output that is generated from the AND gate will go to the input as the priority encoder, will go as the input as the priority encoder. Now from priority encoder, there is, we are using four cross two priority encoder. Here we are using four cross two priority encoder. That's why you see four input are there. And after that, from this priority encoder, the output will be generated and two output will be generated and that will be the name of X and Y. And we will get the address we will get the address of the interrupt service routine. So then CPU will handle the interrupt. So let's say, first we will take that in case one. So in case one, let's say, all input output device will generate the interrupt. Let's say that happen, that all the input output device, what it is done, that all the input output device, let's say generated the interrupt. And Initially that what the max register value is also one. The max register value is also one. Then the AND operation is performed and we get one in each output. That means let's say we are saying that all of the device which have generated the interrupt. So that means here one, here one, here one, and here also one. And initially max register value is one. So that means one, one, one and one. So all of the device has, we will perform the AND operation. So here one, one, one and one. So that means all of the, all of the after performing the AND operation, we get one in each output. In each output, we get one. Now in our four into two priority interrupt, this is what, this is the priority encoder, this priority encoder. If the high priority input output device generate interrupt, then we take don't care condition in case of other input output device. Let's say now here we have four input output device and this all four input output device has generated the interrupt. Now among them, what we will see that which has the most priority, high priority among this input output device which has the highest priority. And priority is based on the speed. Priority is based on the speed. Now among them, disk, printer, reader, and keyboard, disk has what? Disk speed is much more. So disk has the highest priority. So we will do what? We will take that, only that interrupt. Only that interrupt we will take and other, inter other device, generated the interrupt, we will make it as the don't care condition. We will make we it as the don't care condition. Then other devices generated the interrupt or not. We do not have to look over that. That's why here you see that I0, that is what I0 is for? I0 is for disk. I0 is for the disk. So if generated the interrupt, then other devices that is here, that is printer, reader, keyboard, which it is present or not, and it is generated the interrupt or not, we do not have to look over that. So that's why you see, we have used that X, X, X. That means here, the device is the most priority device, high priority device generated the interrupt. That's why 
we will check omitting the other devices if it is generated interrupt or not we do not have to look over that that's why for other devices that means for i1 i2 i3 the input will be as the don't care condition because if high priority device generated the interrupt then we do not have to look over other devices generated interrupt or not then we will simply put don't care condition for that we will simply put don't care condition now it will do what now see in table one that this is the table one is this table one you will see that what i0 is one and in other case we simply put xxx x means don't care condition we do not have to look over that so then generate y and x value to zero so y and x value y and x value will be zero here y and x value will be zero so this is what this will be the look like the vector address and y and x value will be here as zero so this is what so that means the total address the total address will be zero 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 only these zeros will be there present these zeros will be there only the y and x value will be changed these zeros will be present only the y and x value which we have will be changed now let's say in second condition now let's say we move to the second condition that is let's say disk didn't generate the interrupt disk is not generated the interrupt so for disk it will be what so for this it will be zero and for others input output device generated the interrupt so let's say disk has doesn't uh, generated the interrupt this three input output device which we have printer reader keyboard they are generated the interrupt so that means for disk it will be zero and for other devices printer reader keyboard they all generated in the interrupt so one will go for each so one will go there because they all generated the interrupt but for case of disk it will be zero because disk doesn't generate the interrupt so that means what will happen now initially the marks register value is one so that means zero will be there there will be one because initially the marks register value is one so one will go here from here also here the printer generated the interrupt so okay that means one will go as a input of this and get and marks register is what there is one then here also it will be one because it is generating the interrupt and marks register value is one so that means one will go here then here also the keyboard is generated the interrupt then okay so that's why keyboard if, if keyboard is generated the interrupt then it will be what one here so as an input the one will go there and here also from here the from marks register the one will go so after performing and operation zero into one it will be zero it will be one it will be one it will be one so that means now the priority encoder is what now this i0 this i0 input is associated with the disk this i0 input is associated with the disk so that means what will happen this i0 value it will get as a zero but all the inputs other inputs i1 i2 i3 because i1 is associated with printer i2 is associated with reader i3 is associated with keyboard so all of this device generated interrupt so after performing the and operation we are getting all the inputs value as one so that means only i0 value will be zero and for other input output device other input output device is generated the interrupt so that's why all of the value will be one so like this the priority encoder gets the input now priority encoder will do what it will output the output will be what the output in this case will happen what in this case the output will be zero and one so that means because here also 
Why zero or one we are getting? Now we are getting zero and one because among printer, reader and keyboard, printer has the highest priority. So that means, so that means we will choose the only I1 value here. And other cases, I2 and I3, we will put simply don't care condition because there is a thing in the case we have already discussed that if highest priority device, input output device generated the interrupt, then we doesn't look over other device generated interrupt or not, generated interrupt or not. We doesn't look over that because among them printer is the highest. So we will consider the printer and I zero value we already get that is the zero. I zero value we already get that is the zero. So in this case, the output will be zero one. So like this, if you see the table, that's why for I zero, in, if we check this I zero is what zero and I one, I one has the highest priority input output device. So one, and after that we didn't check I two and I three. So that's why I don't care condition and the output we get that is X zero and Y one. So zero one, we, we will get. Same as that if let's say this can printer both this is both uh, doesn't generate the interrupt. In that case, what will happen? We only consider the reader because reader and keyboard, let's say reader and keyboard, both generated the interrupt. So both generated the interrupt means what? I1, I0 and I1 value will be what? I0 and I1 value, this will get as the, we will get here also zero and here also zero because this both this devices, this can printer doesn't generate the interrupt. Only reader and keyboard generated the interrupt. So that means the value will be I2 and I3. Both value will be one. So among them, reader has the highest priority. So we will only consider the reader case. We will only consider the reader case, but here it will be don't care condition. So zero, zero, 001 don't care. This is the third zero, zero, 001 cross don't care condition. And then in that case, the output will be what? The output, the X value will be one and the Y value will be zero. And here also IST, in this case IST, you see we're putting one. Now IST means what? This is the, this is a flag. This is a flag which describes that any particular device generate interrupt or not. Now zero means no one generated the interrupt. Zero means no one generated the interrupt. And one means that interrupt is generated. That interrupt is generated. So this is, this will work like a flag that if it is one, that means interrupt is generated. And if it is zero, that means in this system, interrupt is not generated. So it will work like a flag. And this is the last case you see that if no, no device generated the interrupt, only the keyboard is generated the interrupt. In that case, what will be zero, 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 one? Because only one device keyboard is generating. And this is what this has the lowest priority. Other devices is not doing anything they are not generating the interrupt. So that case, there is not nothing. We do not have to put in don't care condition because don't care condition came when that if a device generated the interrupt, all the devices and among them, if the, the highest priority device generated the interrupt, then we will only take that. And for other device, we do not consider it generated interrupt or not. So in that case, keyboard is only a device, a single device which is generating the interrupt. And this has the lowest priority. So that means here do, we do not have any don't care condition. So that's why we do not have any don't care condition, zero, 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 one. And the output will be what? The X value will be one and Y value will also be one here. Then the output will be look like this. And if 
no device generated the interrupt. That is why that is zero, 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 zero. That no, no other device, that not, no devices generated the interrupt. Then what will happen? That means there will be don't care condition for the output because it is working for the interrupt. And if no device is generating the interrupt, then that means what? No value will be there. So we will ignore that. So this matrix or the this uh, our our total this values that that is the nothing. This this is what that has no value. So that means we will use don't care here. So this is the type like this. We will put the table, and that's how we will know that. And there is another thing that is IEN. This IEN is what? This IEN is basically, this is also a flag like IST. Now IST flag describes that if it is zero, that means no device generated the interrupt. And if it is one, that means any particular device generated the interrupt. Now IST doesn't describe that which device generated the interrupt. It will only say that a device is generated the interrupt. Like this, it has the, this information only. It doesn't have the information which device has generated the interrupt. Only it has the information that among these four devices, anyone has generated the interrupt. But it doesn't know that particular which device. That, that's why if we want to know that any particular device will generate the interrupt, this information it has only. But which particular device is generating, it doesn't know that. But IEN is what? IEN is also a flag like that. And this flag describes what? This flag describes whether CPU is ready to take the interrupt or not. That now CPU is ready to take the interrupt or not. This will be described this flag. Now, whether CPU is ready to take the interrupt or not will be described by the IEN. That is IEN flag will describe that. Now, IEN is zero. If IEN value, IEN value is zero, that means interrupt will not be handled by the CPU. That if any interrupt is generated, it will not handle by the CPU if its value is zero. If its value is zero, then that means what? That means no. If generated the interrupt, then it will not handle by the CPU. And if its value is one, let's say if its value is one, that means interrupt will be handled by the CPU. And if IEN and IST, both value is one, then INT SEK. Now this INT SEK is what? Interrupt acknowledgement. So if interrupt is generated, the interrupt acknowledgement from CPU will go. Now in the daisy chaining, you have seen that interrupt acknowledgement is given. The one signal goes to the highest priority in, in a device. The highest priority device, input output device, which have it gone there. And if it is the highest priority, if it is the highest priority device generated that particular interrupt, it will consume that and otherwise it will pass it. Like this happening, but here, if INT SEK, that is interrupt acknowledgement signal from the CPU goes to one, that means it is enabled. And through this particular address, this is the particular address which we will get. And through this particular address, the interrupt will be handled. That means CPU will go to that particular address. And after going to that particular address, it will be what is going to that particular address, interrupt will be handled. So this is what, this is our priority or parallel priority interrupt. Now from here, we know 
we able to know that what is interrupt? Interrupt is basically what? Interrupts are basically to make now all our systems. Now, if this is the microprocessor concept that we have 8085 microprocessor, 8086. But basically nowadays, Intel architecture, in previously there was Intel architecture 8085 that is used, but now it is 8086 architecture we use. So interrupt is basically what? In this interrupt are used to make, it is used to make the microprocessor signal to respond to the high priority externally initiated signals. That means when a interrupt signal, when an interrupt signal came, then the processor means our CPU, our CPU stop the execution of the current program. Now let's say a thing came, that means CPU has to serve that CPU is performing because we have the CPU and the CPU is doing some work. Let's say it is doing some work. Now the signal is coming from an input output device that please your stop your execution or whatever task you are doing, stop that and perform my work and perform my work here. So this is what, this is the thing that the interrupt signal will what in the device, input output device, which is present, it will send a signal that, okay, whatever you are doing or whatever program execution you are doing, stop that, stop that execution and perform my task. So, because we have to perform that. So that's why it will, the CPU, which is doing the current operations of the thing, which it is doing now, it will stop that and perform that system or the perform input output device signal, which is going perform that operation there. And it will be what? It will execute the program corresponding to that interrupt signal. That means the program or the task that is given by the input output device, it will perform that task first. And after completing the, that task, the CPU will again resume the task which it was doing previously. So this is what? This is the thing the interrupt is. This is the thing that stop whatever the CPU is doing, stop that execution or stop that execution of the program and start performing the signal which is given to you, start performing. That means now start this input output device which is given, that task should be performed now. And after completing that task, the CPU will again resume the previous task. The CPU will again resume its previous task and it will complete that. And we have what? We have many, many we have like this interrupt signals. One is trap. One is trap. This is like a signal we have trap and this trap value is what it will be one or zero and we have also like rst signal rst 7.5 rst rst 5 5.5 that means what rst 6.5 is what highest priority and non-maskable interrupt and intr and inta already you know that INTR interrupt request. INTR is what? INTR is the interrupt request. And INTA is what? Interrupt acknowledgement. This is what we have interrupt, interrupt one. That means the microprocessor has been interrupted by a peripheral device. That means peripheral device is interrupted that. And that we have to, it requires the urgent execution of its task, of its task, it has the urgent execution. That means if CPU, CPU has one thing, so CPU will do what? CPU may access or not. Now, if CPU accepted that, yes, your task will be now executed by me. So if the request is accepted, that means if 
any peripheral device or input output device which will generate the interrupt so the interrupt signal will came to the cpu now it depends on the cpu whether it will accept it or not let's say it will uh, accept it let's say it's uh, it has accepted then the interrupt acknowledgement this will send by the interrupt acknowledgement so if it will not accept then it will not send the interrupt acknowledgement so this is basically the thing of the interrupt okay clear समझ में आया सबको यस सर यस सर ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट आवर इंटरप्ट इज नाउ आई विल टेक अ सेकंड क्लास आल्सो दैट इज फ्रॉम द 3 पीएम एंड दैट इज इन द दिस क्लास आई विल स्टार्ट द डिस्कशंस ऑफ दैट द विल स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन एंड इट विल कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास आल्सो फ्रॉम 3 पीएम in that next class because uh, very much less time is there so that's why in that class i will continue the discussion but i will start i will start the discussing uh, now and it will be continued in the next class also so this instruction or uh, interrupt thing we have covered now the thing we will start today that is the instruction classification now instruction we already discussed that what is the instruction and how it came we have already discussed instructions register are there so all of the thing we have discussed now first starting the discussion about the instruction classification so what are the type of classification we have for the instruction now instruction is basically what instruction is a binary pattern it is a binary pattern and this is designed to perform a specific function because let's say a instruction uh, given like this mov a comma a comma b that means a and b are two registers a and b are two registers now we are saying that move move the data that is present in the b to register a to register a move that data this is what so that's why that means what the instruction is what it is performing or it is designed like a way that it will perform a specific function it will perform a specific function and the entire group of instruction the entire group of instruction we called it as the instruction set the entire group of instruction we call this as the instruction set now this instruction set will determine what the total group of instruction with all together we called it as the instruction set and the instruction set will do what this instruction set will perform the functions so we same thing that instruction now group of instruction we make them we call them as the instruction now the types what are the types types we have for instruction now in types we divide the instruction set of the instruction we divide that into three classification what are them based on the functionality that whatever the function it performs based on that we can divide a instruction that is the based on the functionality based on the byte length that means whatever the length of the instruction based on the length of the instruction we can divide the or classify the instruction set and addressing nodes based on the addressing nodes we can also divide the instruction set this is our in this three types in this three types we can divide okay so in the next class 
from uh, 3 to 3.50 p.m. We will discuss this functionality based on the functionality, how based on the byte length and based on the addressing node, we can divide, okay? So this class is completed. If anyone has any question, you may ask. Anyone has any question? It is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. So, in the next class, I will discuss over that. So, I am ending the session now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.